Well, hey everyone, let's take a few minutes to look at the latest film from Disney and Pixar, Soul. Directed by Pete Docter and Kemp Powers and starring the voice talents of Jamie Foxx, Tina Fey, and Graham Norton. Fox plays Joe Gartner, a middle-aged man who has dreamed of becoming a jazz musician for many years, but his life hasn't quite turned out the way he expected. Instead of playing jazz professionally, he's stuck as a middle school band teacher in New York City. But one day, he finally gets his big break. And then he dies. And since he's not quite ready to journey into the great beyond, he gets a job as a mentor in the great before for souls that have not yet been born. And he is paired up with the very troublesome soul number 22, played by Tina Fey. And so they begin their misadventures in life and the afterlife. Or, I guess, technically the before life. Rare is the day when I see a Pixar movie I don't like. Today, however, is not that day, because I like this one too. I found this to be a very interesting interpretation of the concept of a soul and what happens to souls before they are born, how they are born into the world, how they live, what happens when they die, although we don't see a whole lot of that. We just know they go off into the great beyond, which is just a giant ball of light. What's in that ball of light? Who knows? And basically, the movie is creating this big imaginative world in order to examine the question, what is the meaning of life? Which is ambitious, to say the least. And it definitely has a similar vibe to Inside Out, which was also directed by Pete Docter and created a big imaginative world to examine the idea of a child growing up. There were a lot of little details that I thought this movie really nailed. Uh, once again, the movie shows that Pixar really understands how animals work. In fact, you might even notice a cameo from a rather famous animal, which I certainly was not expecting. I got a kick out of that. And as a former band dork myself, they pretty much nailed the middle school band. You got the kids that don't want to be there at all. They're just there because mommy and daddy made them. You got the kids that are trying, but still aren't very good because, you know, they're just kids. And of course, you got the occasional prodigy. The animation is spectacular once again. Uh, I confess I haven't spent a whole lot of time in New York City, but based on my limited experience, it looked like they did a pretty good job bringing that to life. The Great Before looks absolutely gorgeous with all these flowing green hills, and the souls are represented by these little blue-greenish blobs of something. And in addition to all these unborn souls running around, you also have the counselors that are running the place, and they are represented by these line drawings that look like they were done by Picasso. And it really sets them apart since they're basically 2D drawings in an otherwise 3D world. And for some reason, they are all named Jerry. And I did appreciate how even though John Ratzenberger isn't actually in the movie, they did create a background character in his likeness, so technically he still is kind of in the movie which is important because if too much time elapses without John Ratzenberger appearing in a Disney or Pixar movie, Great Cthulhu will waken from his slumber and lay waste to this miserable world. Hey, that's just how it is. I don't make the rules. The voice acting was pretty good, which really isn't that surprising considering the cast. I like what Jamie Foxx did with Joe. I think he really captured this guy who is in the midst of a midlife crisis or perhaps an afterlife crisis and then also a before life crisis. It's just a life crisis in general. Tina Fey is apparently really good at playing an annoying little shit, and I'm gonna try not to read too much into that. I thought Graham Norton was very funny as Moonwind, the spiritually connected sign spinner. And there's a few other voices you might recognize here and there, like Felicia Rashad and Angela Bassett and Questlove. The score I thought was excellent. Most of the music that plays on Earth is some jazz music composed by John Batiste, along with a version of It's All Right that he did for the credits. And the afterlife music is this very calm, soothing, new agey kind of sound, which was done by, and I cannot believe I'm saying this, Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross. And if you had told me way back in the 90s that one day Trent Reznor of Nine Inch Nails would go on to compose the music for a Disney movie, I would have thought you were out of your goddamn mind. I'm still not entirely sure how this happened. I mean, he and Ross did a great job, don't get me wrong, but just how did we get here? The movie does have some weaknesses, mainly when it comes to the story. The first act I thought was really good. 
Joe dies, meets Soul 22, sees the great beyond, and other aspects of the world of souls. But then we get to the second act where he hatches a scheme to return to Earth, and that's where it becomes a bit derivative. There is some really good stuff that happens in that part of the movie. The barbershop scene I thought was really good, but I just feel like there was more they could have done with it than what they did. Without giving too much away, you know how Brave looked like it was going to be this huge, grand, epic adventure, and instead it basically boiled down to bears? Kind of along those lines. It's not a bad story by any means, but maybe should have gone in a different direction. And in terms of representation, it kind of falls in a similar trap to The Princess and the Frog, where is it really all that good for representation if she's a frog for most of the movie? Similar thing going on here, except instead of a frog, he's a little blue-greenish blob of soul stuff. But overall, despite its shortcomings, I did enjoy it very much, and I highly recommend it. If you're in a place where this movie is playing in theaters, I would say it's at least worth a matinee. And if you're not, I'd say it's at least worth the cost of a month of Disney+. Plus. It's fun, it's charming, and it's very much worth your time. And that's all I have to say about Soul. Till next time, take care.